Victoria Treat. Oh my god, you're awake. Listen, I know last episode's anarchistic monarchy was a little bit too much for you. I think you should rest and sit this one out. I need to introduce the government to a special legislative reform using laws plus. Again? What do you mean, where are we? Can't you tell? We are in Central America. Now we start the game in a bit of a pickle. We must maintain turmoil in our country, lower than 20%. Unfortunately for us, we have 25% turmoil in every province, meaning we're losing since the very beginning of the game. Classic Central America. That's alright, because our president, Francisco Morazan, has a very easy solution. All we have to do is maintain our grip over the government. Classic Central America. In order to help with that, we must disband every battalion that's not stationed in El Salvador. And I know I can just release all the Central American nations as puppets and re-annex them immediately. Unfortunately, I solve my problems with violence. And there you go, a perfect opportunity to round up all of the anti-government forces. And with the dissolution of Central America, our mission is to reunite it once again. Unfortunately, Costa Rica and Los Altos declared their independence, but that's okay because El Presidente has abolished the elections, freeing him to establish a military government with the sole purpose of firing at the unarmed protesters. Now I know some of you will say that's not the best approach, but soon you will not be able to. Alright boys, let's go and keep the peace violently. Oh no, New Granada is supporting Costa Rica. That's not good. Hopefully we can charge in before... Nope, doesn't seem likely. At least we took care of Los Santos. Unfortunately, we're going to have to give Costa Rica some time for them to rethink our relationship. Hopefully, they don't leave us for someone with a bigger arm. Oh my god, someone with a bigger army. I accept. Okay, I know some of you would say that El Presidente is a bit of a failure and a douchebag. However, that's new Granadian propaganda. Costa Rica is not a real country and the government is determined to achieve peaceful reunification. That's why we need colonial exploitation. Costa Rica Mosta Rica, I'm pretty sure that the entirety of the African continent will be enough to satisfy all of my needs. Speaking of needs, we definitely need women to get out and get a job. As for internal security, we need gendarmerie. That's right. Right, with this brand new legislation, it won't matter what race, religion or ethnicity you are. Police brutality will be distributed equally. We respect equality. Never spread foreign propaganda. Finally, the technology we needed to solve our iron shortage. Oh. By the way, have I ever mentioned the only place in Central America with coal is Costa Rica? Coincidentally, the government has decided to reunify with Costa Rica by force. And Mexico is willing to help. All we have to do is give them Los Altos. I mean, there's nothing here. I don't care. What's this? Oh my god, they backed down. There you go, guys. A peaceful reunification, as promised. With our internal security secured, I also noticed that the industrialists are starting to regain their influence from before the revolution. Oh hi there, my name is Professor Anti-Socialism and today I've been sent by the government to discuss the difference between public and private school systems. One of them is clearly trying to spread knowledge much like capitalism and the other is trying to preach the evils of socialism. Now what happens if we give socialism to the kids? That's right. Remember, so long as we have a private school system, we'll make sure that your kids learn the values of capitalism, if you pay for it. And the British are going for a market unification, that will be pretty good for us. A defensive pact with France? Why not? I need someone to defend me against the aggressive Americans? That's just classic Central America. Oh boy, the Americans look quite aggressive. I think we're going to need more defensive pacts. Also, I can't just sit here and watch the Cubans spreading socialism with Spanish support. The Americans might have joined, but that doesn't matter because our business partners in Britain will pretty much take care of everything. Good job, Britain. Finally, remember kids, capitalism is much like smoking tobacco. Profitable, consumable, and not to mention, extremely cool. You should definitely try it at least once. As long as we have a private education system, we'll make sure to groom your children into proper consumers. And to help with that, we definitely need laissez-faire. Alright, it's time for our general, Francisco Murazan, to step down as he has achieved all of his goals and stabilized the nation. It's time to replace him with someone a little bit more industrious. Oh no, the landowners actually have more influence. And now we have a brand new general, Victoriano Barahuna. The British completed market unification. This will definitely boost our economy. And we're also getting German immigrants. Haha, <laughs> eat the Donkey Balls, Prussia. 
Central America is where it's at. And finally we are victorious against the evil Cubans. And it's all thanks to our general, Victoriano Barahuna. With the economy freed, we're going to need more laborers and consumers. Oh boy, here comes the American Civil War. But more importantly, we have foreign investment 3, meaning that we can now invest in every British colony, which will transform our business into big, big business. Oh no, Lincoln just gave up. And now the US is stuck with these disgusting borders. How embarrassing. But do you know what's more embarrassing? Every time I build an opium plantation in India, the British investors just swoop in and buy them off me. Because we have laissez-faire. I can't actually hold them. Well, this sucks. With the borders free, we also need free trade. Unfortunately, the British are buying out all of our businesses, which means our capitalists have no choice than to become British labor. That sounds like socialism. I can't accept that. Speaking of socialism, we definitely need poor laws, so the poor can shut up about not being able to eat and other poor people stuff. They're embarrassing the government. And finally, we have the technology needed to establish a private security, which will not only increase our throughput, but also reduce the minimum wage by force. Also, we must liberalize the government with an oligarchy. And finally, we can leave the British Empire. Our economy will definitely take some damage. But maybe we can join someone else's faction. Oh my god, Russia is controlling Japan. And they have zero infamy. Perhaps we can fix our economy by stopping Russian sanctions. You know what? I'll think about it. Also, I just realized, the higher the law enforcement level, the higher the bonuses we get. Now that's something I definitely need in my life. The French offer an alliance, why not? They have a trade league, which means we'll instantly join their market. Now that sounds like business. Oh no, the socialists are rebelling. I'm sorry guys, we can't have an oligarchy. We must give socialism to the kids. And there you go, the people of Central America are rising up to stop the evils of socialism. I'm so proud of you guys. And as for you, General Barahona, nothing personal, it's just business. And finally we have a parliamentary republic transforming our military dictatorship into an elective dictatorship. We also have a brand new Lord Protector, Fermin Corral. We also need a proper healthcare system, if you pay for it. Oh no, the socialists are rebelling. Again. That's alright guys, remember, when the people of Central America want socialism, America will always arrive to destroy them. You know, the classic American and Central American interaction. Okay, I do realize no one's happy, however, we have a land reformer, which means we can have homesteading. Russia is ready to pay off our debts of 1.3 million. Man, that's kind of chop change. But the socialists destroyed all of my construction sectors, so I really need the money. And our alliance with France is null and void because they're ruled by a child. Amazing. And the US is offering us a membership in the Grant Alliance, an ideological union. It's not exactly NAFTA, but I feel compelled to accept. Oh my god, the Chinese are ripping Russian ass in the Japanese Civil War. I've never seen that before. The socialists are rising up against the land reform and the Americans are here to help us. I think I've seen this one before. Finally, the people can move freely between provinces, which will help the local labor shortage. And the Japanese are also free from the Russians, but they have to bankroll China. And according to my calculations, that's like 54,000 buccarinos every week. Jesus. Okay, listen up guys. In Central America there is exactly zero lead or sulfur, which means we have to import them on premium prices. Coincidentally, Japan has loads of sulfur and lead. And I smell a business opportunity. Hey, wait a minute, the British are also here. Amazing. This is gonna be more of a wait until they declare bankruptcy type of conflict. And of course we need total separation of church and capitalist state. As we're waiting for the inevitable Japanese bankruptcy, I just watched the brand new Victoria 3 1.8 update announcement. And I'm gonna be honest, you guys really need better marketing. Allow me to help. Victoria 3 update 1.8 will allow you to discriminate against your population from most favorite to least favorite people. Oh, I'm sorry, are you more of a class conscious type of guy? Well, we got you covered with a brand new caste system, available only for India though. Unfortunately, this means that 
that Tom Cruise will not try to save the extremely rigid caste system in Japan. But worst of all, you cannot transform Great Britain into Airstrip 1. But fear not, because we have also added a brand new famine and food security system, which will allow you to murder millions using gross negligence and many more changes, which you will get for free. Because our marketing team says it's not okay to sell discrimination and starvation, the DLC. That's why we offer an additional flavor pack, Pivot of Empire, which will make India actually playable. The marketing team says it's okay to sell this one. Alright guys, don't forget to rate my marketing as we look at American Civil War 2, Electric Boogaloo, the Russian Civil War and the Franco-Prussian War. We managed to land in Japan, and they have nothing to stop us. Finally, we can have all of the sulfur and land our industry could ever need. We also managed to max out our law enforcement, giving us 50% less starting wage. I mean, the standard of living went down, but look at that population spike. Oh no, I can't afford a revolution right now. This sucks. Wait, what? The British lost India. Amazing. I mean, by the looks of things, the Ottomans and the Austrians are the big winners. And the British are dealing with something. This amount of ungodly events definitely calls for state atheism. And we have a brand new Lord Protector, Johan Antonio Ferreira. Also, the Americans kicked us out of the faction. And the church is far too powerful, which means we need an oligarchy. With the proper people in charge, we need a comprehensive land reform. As you all know, the land has suffered at the hands of the evil perverted socialists. But we are not. <laughs> For there is an easy solution. All we have to do is gather all of the socialist trash and burn it to the ground, so all South American people can breathe capitalism. We are also going to have religious pluralism, because everyone wants it, for some reason. We also managed to find our very first anarcho-liberal, which will help us to transform our chancellor, Juan Antonio Ferreira, into the very first corporatocracist. Oh my god, a huge revolution for weighted universal voting. I'm sorry, Juan Antonio Ferreira, but you didn't make the cut. <laughs> Which means now we have universal suffrage, where buying and selling votes is legal. We also have non-secret ballot, meaning everyone knows who you voted for. And a presidential republic. Let's get to voting. Amazing elections, and we have a brand new president, Sebastian Montiel, an anarcho-liberal. And I've also noticed that the British left alone. And I smell a business opportunity. The Aotearoa are also independent, and nothing says corporate greed quite like aggressive military expansionism. Am I right? Gentlemen, with great pleasure I wish to announce that our beloved Megacorp has taken control over the government, and now the head of state is our chief executive officer, Sebastian Montiel. Welcome to the corporate republic. With half of Australia and half of New Zealand, we can now open a brand new branch of Megacorp Gold. We are also going to trade a random African village for French Guyana in order to expand our gold extraction. We also must stop these evil socialists from sucking our country dry. Speaking of evil socialism, we must abolish all taxation. As you know, taxation is theft, and it only serves to choke the honest businessmen of our country. Another election cycle. Oh my god, there's actual competition this time. Finally, no taxation. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, I know this might look wrong, but that's just the markets readjusting themselves. Private investment will fix everything. All we have to do is lower our spending and build more gold mines in order to make the government profitable and self-sustainable. The Conservative Party won, which means we have a brand new chief executive officer, Carlos Regalado, a military man. Amazing. Russia is offering to pay off our debts. I'll take it. And we're going to see how much money can the government make once we double our gold mines. In the meantime, people should really understand that there are no gods other than Megacorp. Oh my Megacorp, look at that investment pool. I guess we're going to have to build more construction sectors, which doesn't seem like a great idea, but I'm gonna do it. Finally, everyone has to take capitalism religiously as it should be. All right, it's time for new elections. The Patriotic Party won, and we have a brand new chief executive 
officer, Jorgen Fernandez. Oh boy, another election cycle. Yes, we skipped a couple of years, as we are currently waiting for the markets to pick up. However, first we must fix the steel shortage. To that end, Megacorp is going to transform Cuba into Birmingham, with piles of coal lying around and everything. And the free trade party won, and our chief executive officer is Fernando Machado. Also, our extremely intelligent CEO has decided to completely abolish all of the government administration, because we don't collect any taxes, there are literally no penalties. Genius! Even more elections! Amazing! But do you know what is even more amazing? Central America is now open for international investment. I noticed that the investment pool has ran out, and no one's buying my dice plantations. Also, I don't want to alarm anyone, but if I pause my construction, the government is actually profitable. There you go, kids, it's possible. Get out there and overthrow your evil government that's punishing you with unfair socialist taxes. Megacorp denies any legal responsibility. This is not a financial advice. We do not condone violence. Megacorp. And just look at that undeniable GDP growth. Also, looking at Europe, this is the best Austrian and Ottoman games I've ever seen. Unfortunately for Austria, however, I've been sitting here playing the best Central America game of all time, which means they have to transfer the Netherlands to me or face Megacorp in a legal battle. Foolish mortals, you cannot escape Megacorp and their army of lawyers. Spain made their own faction. The Latin bloc. This won't save you Spain, because it's time for World War One, which consists of Russia. Russia, France and Central America against Austria, Italy and Spain. Brought to you by Megacorp. Spain capitulated, Italy capitulated. Wow, that was easy. And it's all thanks to Megacorp. We liberated Hungary and we gave France their rightful land. But most importantly, the Netherlands belongs to Megacorp. And now we can raise the Netherlands' subscription fees. And even though we are constructing, the government is still profitable. There you go, kids. The answer to financial troubles is violence. Megacorp denies any legal responsibility. This is not a financial advice. We do not condone violence. Megacorp. And we are now number 8 in the GDP ranking, right behind Prussia. I'm sorry, Prussia, but you have to face Megacorp's lawyers in court. And all we have to do is give France a random African village so they can become our legal representative. Oh my god, the audacity. They demand for us to change our regime. Honestly, I wasn't gonna do it, but I'll send in the military. Remember kids, the International Court of Human Rights in The Hague belongs to Megacorp. Also, the Russians are attacking from the other side. Great timing. And Japan is using an obligation to offer an alliance. It has a heart on it and everything. After everything I've done to you, Japan, breaking your legs and stealing all your sulfur and lead, and the fact that I owe you an obligation, I can't refuse. Remember kids, if a girl rejects you, cut off her legs and steal her lead and sulfur. In due time, she'll fall in love with you. You can always trust Megacorp. The Russians won and they got Finland back. Also, we're ready to raise the government wages so we can get some prestige. And we also managed to provoke the Polish people to rise up for their independence. Classic Central America. All right, Prussia, I declare you guilty as charged. We managed to liberate the Rhineland. And unfortunately, we couldn't liberate a Poland. But we conquered East Prussia. Classic Central America. Our CEO, Fernando. Fernando Machado definitely does a great job running the company. Remember kids, these are the legal changes you must demand from your government if you want to live in real capitalism. And these are all the factions of the world. Unfortunately, we couldn't form our own because we didn't have the prestige. Thanks to the corrupt system of you need high government wages in order to have prestige. But still, best Ottoman game ever. Also, are you excited for the brand new Victoria 3 1.8 free update? Starvation and discrimination. I know I am. And this is the final score. To be honest, we have a pretty good GDP. However, I will admit that abolishing all the government administration buildings at the very beginning was going to make everything a lot easier. Remember kids, abolish the government as soon as possible. This message is approved by Megacorp. Until next time.